Adam Smith is considered to be the first free trade thinker, and his model of foreign trade is called the theory of absolute advantage. Now, we will be looking at two classical models, one by Adam Smith and the other one by David Ricardo. And to understand these models, in the previous lecture video, I had discussed various assumptions you require in, on, in order to understand classical models. So now let us understand classical models. To understand Adam Smith's model of absolute advantage, consider this simple table. We have two countries, the US and India, and each of these two countries produce two goods, clothing and food, and the only factor of production they require is labor. Or labor is the only input required to produce clothing as well as food. Now, in the US, you require three hours of labor time to produce one unit of clothing. And in India, you require 12 hours of labor time to produce one unit of clothing. And according to Adam Smith, U.S. has an absolute advantage in production of clothing over India. And why so? Because you require less labor time to produce clothing in the U.S. relative to India. Now look at the case of food. In the U.S., you require six hours of labor time to produce one unit of food. In India, you can produce the same amount of food using four hours of labor time. So according to Adam Smith, India has an absolute advantage in production of food. Another way to look at this is India has an absolute disadvantage in production of clothing and, an, and U.S. has an absolute disadvantage in production of food. In the previous slide, we have established that U.S. has an absolute advantage in production of clothing and India has an absolute advantage in production of food. And so according to Adam Smith or his absolute advantage theory, what this states is the following. Each country should produce and export the product in which it has an absolute advantage. And so the U.S. should produce and export clothing and India should produce and export food. And import the product in which it has an absolute disadvantage. So U.S. will be importing food from India and India will be importing clothing from the U.S. So this is the formal statement of absolute advantage theory and we'll show how this works. Now let us look at how the world gains by foreign trade. And that is, look at the following. You require six workers in the U.S. to produce one unit of output. And suppose the U.S. decides to reduce uh, output of food by one unit. So how many workers are freed? There are six workers which are freed from the food industry. And these workers move to the clothing industry. And if you use six workers in the clothing industry, how much by how much will output of clothing go up? It will go up by plus two units. Look at the case of India. India decides to reduce output of clothing by one unit. By how much does output of food go up in India? It will be plus three. So if you are looking at net gain to the world, I'll just write W. In terms of food clothing, because of this reallocation, the world gains plus one unit of clothing and plus two units of food. So when U.S. decides to reduce production of food, output of clothing goes up. 
and when india decides to reduce output of clothing output of food goes up and by reallocating like this look at the net gain to the world the world output of clothing has increased by plus 1 and world output of food has increased by plus 2 by just doing this simple switch so the world as a whole becomes better or produces more when the us moves its workers from food to clothing and india moves its workers from clothing to food or from relatively inefficient production to more efficient production and the world as a whole let us look at this table again we have already established that us has an absolute advantage in production of clothing over india and india has an absolute advantage in production of food over the us now let us try to look at the direction of foreign trade in terms of the formal structure that we have developed in the previous video and we do it in terms of relative price ratios now look at the following we know that pc by pf equals alc divided by alf and what is alc it is the amount of labor required to produce one unit of clothing and alf is the amount of labor required to produce one unit of food so how much is the relative price of clothing in the us in autarky it will be alc divided by alf in the us or 3 divided by 6 and this will equal 1 half what about relative price of clothing in india pc by pf in india in autarky will be 12 divided by 4 and this will give us 3 also what we determine based on relative prices is in autarky relatively speaking clothing is much cheaper than what it is in india or another way to look at this is relatively speaking food is cheaper than what it is in the us relative to india so since there's a price differential in autarky this becomes the basis for trade and we already know in autarky relative price of clothing in the us is lower than what we have for india thus with foreign trade us should export clothing and import food from india and the opposite is true as well that is india should export food to the us and import clothing from the us so thus we can show the pattern of trade either based on intuition the way i had shown it earlier or in more formal terms in terms of relative prices and that's what we have done right now another thing you will observe is the following <clears throat> what we have assumed is the number of workers or labor time required to produce one unit of output is constant and this does not change as you produce more and more or what we are looking at is the case of constant cost ppc so originally adam smith had assumed in a more formal way constant ppc and this is something you'll remember from previous videos when we have constant cost ppc when we when these countries engage in foreign trade this will lead to complete specialization in production that means since us has an absolute advantage in production of clothing this is the only item it will produce and it will stop producing food why because we have constant cost ppc and what about india with international trade india will stop producing clothing and completely focus on food so if you assume constant cost ppc there will be complete specialization but to prove adam smith's model we do not require per se constant cost ppc it could be increasing cost ppc as well and what will happen with increasing cost ppc you'll recall each country will continue to produce both goods even under foreign trade or with increasing ppc there'll not there'll be no 
complete specialization in terms of production. This happens only when we have constant cost PPC. Let us summarize some of the important points of the absolute advantage model or the theory. Uh, and number one, according to Adam Smith, there could be differences in productivity across nations. And one country could be good in producing one thing. The other country could be good in producing other thing. And these differences in productivity could be because of, say, differences in climate, differences in technology, and so on. And so these differences exist. And what he recommends is that all countries should follow international division of labor. And that by that he meant countries should specialize in production of good in which they are more efficient or have an absolute advantage. And this makes intuitive sense. Based on our previous discussions, posted on different lecture videos. We know some people are happy with foreign trade and others will not be. And exporters will be happy. Importers may, the producers of importables may not be happy. You already know all that. But in an overall sense, we have shown when we looked at constant cost PPC or increasing cost PPC, that each country is better off with foreign trade and so is the world as a whole. And, and so this concludes our discussion of absolute advantage model. And uh, next we'll move on to the theory of comparative advantage due to David Ricardo, which is another classical model. Thank you for your time.